Okay, so I thought um, that Ross was going to give us a book review tonight, but Ross is going to do that next month, hopefully when we're meeting in person back at the Wetland Centre. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to, to uh, do a, a pretty special bird of the evening on the Black Fronted Turn. It was a, a pretty amazing visitor to us <clears throat> just a few weeks ago. Uh, a bird was seen at uh, Fort Scratchley, which I'll, I'll talk about more in detail soon, but just just a few points about the bird itself. So it's in the genus Chelidonius, which is the, the marsh terns. There's only four marsh terns around the world, the black fronted, whiskered black and white winged black tern. Um, and now the hunter is the only place in the world that has had all four of those birds because we have an, an historical record of black tern. Um, pretty amazing. Um, actually, you would probably expect black tern here before this bird, I think, um, because it's a New Zealand breeding endemic. So it it, uh, it hasn't been recorded outside of New Zealand, um, apart from a potentially a a, a, um, a skin found in, in Norfolk Island in the late 1800s. Uh, so this bird is one of those birds that you you know you, you only would ever expect to see if you went to New Zealand, uh, and it breeds only on braided rivers on the South Island, <clears throat> and most birds after breeding disperse. Uh, to the coast, uh, mostly the coast of the South Island, or mostly the, the east coast of the South Island. Um, some birds do end up on the on the on the west coast, um, but some birds move, disperse, migrate. Um, it's hard to say uh, what why some birds do go to the, the North Island. Uh, some of the researchers seem to think that's driven by conditions, so that technically isn't really a migration, which is why I think it's just so amazing that this bird has turned up here. Um, they're not really a species that is hardwired to go north south every year. Um, a bit like Regent honey it is, I guess. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty incredible. And there's there's a shot of the um, the bird in flight. Um, and I have completely unashamedly stolen a whole lot of images of NZ Birds Online, which is a fantastic website about New Zealand birds and they even include all of the vagrants from Australia that have made their way over to New Zealand and they actually have links to Hanzab and all the references. NZ <laughs> Birds Online is a great a great resource out there. Uh, in fact it's at the moment it's the only way to access a lot of Hanzab online is through, through that website while BirdLife Australia gets their <laughs> act together. So there's a there's an adult breeding bird um, and you can see the resemblance to uh, a whiskered tern uh, that nice dark cap, um, red or orange bare parts, um, darkish body, uh, and there's the the um, upper. So you can see it's got a very very pale rump. Um, really, a, an unmistakable bird um, in most respects. Uh, I don't think um, we would really have have missed this bird had one been here before. I guess it's possible, um, but I will. I will show the hands that plate a little bit later. So this is what their breeding grounds look like. The um, amazing braided rivers of New Zealand sending down gravels from the, the highlands towards the sea. Um, and here's a bird sitting on a nest. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's their breeding habitat. And yeah, you can appreciate um, just how fragile and how dynamic that sort of environment is. Uh, and I'll talk about soon in the, their conservation status. There's a, a um, adult feeding a, a chick. And these braided rivers aren't the only, um, like the, the black fronted terns aren't the only species that breed in this habitat. Um, things like the rye bill uh, and the New Zealand dotterel, banded dotterel uh, also breed here, um, New Zealand breeding endemic. So it's a very important habitat. The black fronted tern is actually not only uh, a rare bird with a population of two and a half thousand to, to about 5,000. Uh, it's an endangered species and a lot of conservation efforts are made to try and improve um, the conservation status of this bird. Uh, stoats and rats and all sorts of um, predators are, are able to get at the, the eggs uh, and you can appreciate just in, in that environment that they're, they're, they're highly susceptible to, to, to a lot of things, including obviously climate change. 
Uh, so this is the plate from, from Hanzab. The N and the Z in Hanzab, of course, stands for New Zealand. So Hanzab isn't just about Australian birds. It's, it includes New Zealand and Antarctic birds. Um, so this is the plate that shows uh, the black, black fronted tern. Uh, so that's that's showing the bird at all ages and breeding and adult um, plumages. So it's pretty pretty unmistakable, I think. I don't really think that this bird would have gone unnoticed. I mean, obviously, by non-birders, but uh, yeah, it like wasn't really on 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 the radar. Uh, and, and as I said, it hadn't hasn't been or hadn't been recorded outside of New Zealand until. <laughs> The 20th of June, um, mm. I was actually sleeping in after a 40th the night before, damn it. Michael Kearns was up sea watching at Fort Drive because there was a, a, a low pressure system uh, had forced a lot of uh, like southerly winds and, and, and quite a few people were out sea watching. And I was really most interested in, in the seabirds and I did ask Michael about, you know, are there lots of seabirds? And he said, yeah, not, not that many. So I didn't really hurry up to get up to the port drive or nobbies. And then um, an Arctic type turn flew across and he texted me. And then obviously he put that on hunter birding. Um, and this was the bird. Uh, and it was subsequently identified, I think, I think it was John Spicer Bell, who was the, the only other person that got to see this bird, only other bird watcher that got to see this bird, posted photographs to the um, New South Wales Rare Birds Facebook page, I think it was, uh, and it was called as a black fronted turn. And yeah, that's, that's indeed what it was. So um, yeah, a, a, an amazing record. So those photos are, are Michael's. Um, not entirely sure if that was the initial sighting um and these are john's uh, i think john was dropping his wife off at the art gallery or something he just happened to be uptown saw the hunter birding email about an arctic turn at the at fort scratchley and, and off he went and he was lucky enough to be um the the only other person that got to see and that that is a photo of the bird um pretty pretty special uh, and there's the bird flying over some some lawn uh so here we've got an image from from Google Earth, and this is what I think. Um, <laughs> so this is the point where Michael was positioned, and my understanding is that the bird flew across and, and then proceeded to, to hang around uh, the lawn and, and where it maybe maybe flew across uh, the esplanade as well. But eventually, um, it made its way back out to sea. Um, and during that time, also oh, I should point out that black-fronted terns are actually known to feed over paddocks um, in ploughed fields, etc. They're not, there's certainly not a turn that is tied to estuaries or, or, or the ocean, though they do certainly feed in that habitat, but they also feed uh, on grasslands. Uh, and where, yeah. when they do feed there, they, they are known to feed on worms. And this series of photos is Michael facing from Fort Scratchley car park towards the grass at Fort Scratchley. And here's the bird flying over the lawn and grabbing <laughs> a worm from the from, from the grass. And that to me is just phenomenal that these guys got to see a black fronted turn in Newcastle, but then to, to witness it taking a worm <laughs> is just next level. Like it's it's just such an amazing story. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. The the the, the behaviour is is uh, could 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 go towards the identification, but that's a bloody long way to fly for a worm. Why? Um, yeah, I'm just making sure that chat isn't a question. Oh, yeah, I can't see it. Um, what? Well, as you can see in this photo, um, obviously taken in New Zealand, they. They do travel, they are known to travel with white fronted terns um, to and from the North and South Islands. So I guess it's possible this bird may have gotten caught up with a group of white fronted terns and, and simply flown over the ditch with a, with a bunch of pale faced friends. Um, yeah. 
and potentially the the weather systems leading up to the, the siding may have played a part. Um, that bottom image shows what was happening two days before the siding. The, the day before, you can see that low pressure system really whipping up. On the day of the siding, you can see the, the, the intensity of those southerly winds. And so I guess if a bird had gotten caught up um, in the middle of uh, Tasman Sea there, I may have gotten caught in that, that, that southerly wind. But I mean, the species isn't really known to be a pelagic feeder. I mean, it has been recorded up to 30 kilometres or something offshore, but um, yeah, I mean, we can speculate all we like, but, but I mean, one, one contributing factor might be the fact that there was more than normal, more than usual number of uh, black fronted terns uh, on, the, on the North Island um, this, this winter. So I guess the, the, the chances of a bird um, getting blown off course were a little bit greater because there were more birds on the North Island. Uh, yeah, the black fronted terns, white fronted terns. <laughs> Very imaginative of their term names in, in New Zealand. So yeah, pretty amazing. And congratulations to Michael. It's a remarkable uh, record. Uh, well done to John as well for, for getting some great shots. Who'd have thunk it, eh? Mm -hmm.